Hey guys, I've got a fun project for you today. I recently created this really cute sunshine and rainbows mobile for my baby nursery. And I wanted to show you guys how to easily create one of these cute little rope rainbows. Here's a list of the supplies you'll need, so let's jump right into it. I'm going to start with the top of my rainbow, and as you can see here, the top strand is going to be about 8 inches long. I'm just going to roughly shape that into a rainbow, and then I'm going to fold the rope like this to create the second layer of the rainbow, and then do it one more time to create the third layer of the rainbow. This is just going to give you a basic idea of how large your rainbow will be. You can always adjust this if you find it's too big or too small. So now we're going to want to cut the rope into these different sized pieces. But before we do that, we're going to want to take some standard scotch tape and just kind of wrap it close to the bottom of each layer so that when we cut it, it's not going to fray. So I'm just adding some tape to each end where I have the bends in my rope. And then once I have those all taped off, I will just use my scissors and cut in between the pieces of tape. And now you should have three different sized pieces of rope. They end up being about an inch shorter than one another. I'm gonna start with the top section of the rainbow. So I'll grab the longest rope. And then I'm going to take a piece of floral wire and then cut that to the proper size. So to get the proper size, I'm going to want to lay this out so that I can see how long it is against my rope. And you don't want this to be the full length of the rope. You want it to be about an inch or a little bit over an inch shorter on both ends. And then I'll just really loosely shape that into that rainbow shape. You can always adjust this once your rope is all wrapped. The pieces will become bendable, so this is just a good kind of starting point just to get the basic shape. Starting from about an inch to an inch and a half above the end of the rope, I'm just going to want to try to tuck the very tip of that into the rope because we don't want to poke anybody's fingers with the end of the wire, um, so I just like to hide it within the rope itself. Then all you have to do is shape your rope around the wire like so. I'm taking my first color of yarn. I decided on this mustard yellow color and I'm just going to tighten the wire to the rope like this just using a simple knot. And you'll want to tuck in the end of that yarn into the actual rainbow itself so you don't have to bother with cutting it off. So just do that and, just, and then just start wrapping your yarn all the way around your rope. Be sure to hold the wire in the middle of the rope as you go and shape that rainbow shape as you go as well. Now when you get to near the end of where the wire is, you're going to want to tuck in that little end to the rope as well. You'll also notice that the rope appears a lot longer now. I think this happens because when you're wrapping it, you're actually kind of squishing the yarn and making it stretch out a little bit. So it's not uncommon for one end of the rope to be a little bit longer than the other one, but that's totally fine. We're just going to chop it off at the end and make everything nice and even. Once you get to the end, about an inch after where the wire is, you're just going to want to cut off your yarn, leaving a nice long tail so that we can secure that later. For now though, I'm just going to leave it loose um, in case we need to add a couple more wraps around the rope as we go. Now I'm going to grab the middle piece of my rainbow. I'm going to do the exact same thing here, taking that piece of wire and cutting it a little bit shorter than the actual rope. Once again, tucking in the end so that we don't poke anybody. And then taking my second color, knotting it, tying it tight around that end, and then shaping my rope to the wire and wrapping. One great thing about this project is that it doesn't use a lot of yarn. So you can always use your yarn scraps and your leftover stash to make a whole bunch of these little rainbows.
Once again, as you get to the end, you're gonna wanna tuck in that wire. I'm just comparing this section now with my yellow section because you definitely want the colors of the rope to match up. So this one is gonna be a little bit shorter, so I've just trimmed off some of the wire so that I can make these colors match properly. And then always just double check that both of your ends match. And if you need to do a couple more wraps of either of the colors, you can go ahead and do that. Just remember to leave a long tail when you do cut the yarn. Now onto the third and final piece. This is going to be a much smaller one, so I'm taking a much smaller piece of wire and once again, doing the exact same thing. I also like using a variety of different thicknesses of yarn. I think it adds a little something extra. This yarn is a little bit thicker, not too much, but it does add like a more of a, a thicker, fluffier kind of appearance. And the same thing with this one, I'm just going to compare it to the other ones to make sure that each of the colors line up nicely. So this is what it will look like once it's all kind of put together. I need to wrap that cream colored yarn a little bit more. So I'll just do a couple more wraps of that to make everything match. And now's the time where you can kind of smush and mush these together just to make sure the shape is right and get them sitting in with each other nicely. And I want any knots or any bulges to kind of be on the opposite side. So the front side should be nice and clean um, and the back side is gonna be where we attach these layers together and where all your knots will appear. We will try to hide them the best that we can, but sometimes you'll have a little bulge and it's just nicer when that's on the back. So once you've got your shape all nice, you're going to want to flip around your rainbow and grab two of the pieces of rope and we're going to start attaching those together. First, I'm going to want to tie off these pieces of yarn. So I'm just gonna do a quick knot in the ends of both of these because we don't want our yarn to go anywhere. So I'll just add a knot here and then pull that tight. And then I'll do the same with the other one, just sort of looping it through and then pulling tight. And now we can sew these together. So you're gonna want a thicker needle. I think this is like a darning needle. It's got a rounder, less pointy tip so I don't poke myself. Um, so I'm just going to thread the pink yarn from the middle section into the needle. And then holding those together tightly, I'm just going to draw that needle and thread right through one or two of those strands of the smaller um, cream colored piece, like so. And then I'm just going to draw that back up through one or two strands of the pink. And then pull that tight as you go after each stitch. You're just going to do this all the way across. I like taking two strands because I find it makes a tighter seal. So I'm just going to finish that and go all the way around just making sure everything is nice and tight and these two pieces are nice and secure and they're bending the same way and there's no gaps.
So once you get to the end, you're going to want to create a little knot here at the end and then all you're going to do is kind of weave that same thread back up through the stitches like so. I've just kind of pulled that up through a bunch of the stitches and then I can chop that right off. Now we'll do the same with the final piece. You're going to want to flip this around again so the stitches are on the back. Line up everything where you want it to go. Make sure the bends are the same and that the yarn lines up. So we're going to add a knot into the end of this piece as well. And then once again, we'll use that same string that we just knotted and we'll use that to stitch these pieces together. So once again, I'm just grabbing a couple of the pink strands, pulling that nice and tight and then back up through the yellow and then back through the pink, etc., etc. And then once you get to the end of this row, just do the exact same thing that you did with the pink one. Tie a knot in the end of the string, weave it back up through some of the stitches and then chop it. Once we're done, you're just gonna be left with that final piece of string. You can tie that one tight and then just weave that back up through a couple of the pieces of yarn again and then just chop that one right off. So all of your pieces are nice and secure together, so you can go ahead and take off all of the tape. These ends, we're going to fray them a little bit and make them a little fluffy. We're gonna trim them up so everything is nice and even. So the tape just helped it so that nothing frayed when we were wrapping the rope around. So once all the tape is off, just kind of unwind all of those little pieces. And then I'm just taking a comb and I'm literally combing out all of the pieces of rope just so that they kind of blend together and get all nice and fluffy. Now it's time to give this a little haircut. I wanted about an inch or so of fringe on the end, so I'm just going to carefully cut that off. Make sure each of these sides are even. You can go back through and comb it out again in case you have any strays that are just a little bit longer. You'll wanna make sure you trim those off as well. And then just match up the other side and make sure that they're both even. So here is your cute little rope rainbow. For the mobile I made, I just attached a piece of yarn to the top. Um, you can add a ribbon or something and hang it from a wall as like a wall decoration. You can really do anything with these. You can make bigger ones and make nice huge wall decorations. Here are some of the other ones that I made for the mobile. To add the ribbon on the top, I just kind of weaved a piece of string through a couple strands of the top yellow color. So really that's all there is to making a rope rate, but I hope that you guys liked the tutorial. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Feel free to share the video with a friend and I hope to see you in the next one.